Well, all right, materials fans. In this video, we'll put together the data to to plot the histogram, uh, standard statistical thing. And the first thing we gotta have is the failure stresses we already calculated, listed in ascending order. So let's switch back to the first sheet we did in the earlier video. Just click and drag, highlight that whole column of failure stresses. Right click, copy. Back to the other sheet, right click, and in this case, if I do paste, it won't work. So I'll do Control Z for undo. And then let's try right click, paste, special, values. And okay, now see, I just have the numbers, which is what I wanted. Next piece is to sort that in ascending order. I use data, sort, and then I'm going to try continue with the current selection. Column A, smallest to largest. Okay, yeah, it looks like it did it. 27 something for the low, 58 for the high. That should work fine. So, we got to divide that up into a number of intervals. Uh, to get the number of intervals, there's that formula, right? Start with equals, and then it's 1 plus 3.3 times the log of n, right? So I gotta put in log. I can hit this function key too, which brings up all the functions that are available. If I type log, and there it is, the logarithm. And then it'll give me the arguments for the function in this Windows interface. So it's 30, right, is the number. Notice how in the formula it put the parentheses in for me, which is kind of nice. So obviously you can't have 5.87 intervals. We'll make that 6 as a round number. Interval size, we could just take the difference between the low and the high. So let's say parentheses the high minus the low or the max minus the min divided by 6. It gives me 504, so I'm going to have to be a little bit bigger than 500 to get them all in. Uh, maybe use 600. That's a good round number, isn't it? So then starting at the bottom and working my way up, the first interval is going to be 2600 uh, to 3200, right? It may not like this, we'll see. No, it worked fine. Sometimes if you put in what appears to be a calculation, it'll fuss about it. If you put in, say, 3201, whoops, I should have put this first, a little single quotation, 3201 to 3800, would be my next one. Notice the quotation disappears as it shows, but it's telling Excel that this is going to be a, a uh, text entry and not to worry about the calculation. Next one, 3801 to 4400 and then 4401 to 5000 and then 5000 and 1 to 5600 and then 5601 to 6200 right and hopefully that encompasses all the data I have 58 yeah, there's only going to be a couple left in that end one but that's okay all right so between 2600 and 3200 I've got one two frequency of two and then between 32 and 38, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, quite a few. And I can look right up in the upper left part of the screen. It just, I just lost it. But if you see it's three rows, four rows, five, six, seven, it'll count them for me. I can just take, okay, seven rows, seven. That appeared right here, where it says D12. I'll do it again for this next one. 38 to 44. Right there, 
eight rows, so eight of them. Oops, I hit the wrong number. 44 to 5,000. 44. Right there, there's another eight. 5,000 to 56. Right there, three, and then the last one will be two. So there is the data right there to plot in the histogram. But before we do that, let's check and make sure that we've got all 30 of them in here that I didn't miscount, which is, you know, one of those things I might do. So let's go back to the Home tab, and I'll use the Auto Sum, hit Enter, and checks out to 30. That's good. Moving right along to the plot, then, I'll just highlight the data and go to Insert. And in this case, we're going to use a column plot Probably a basic 2D one like that will look just fine. So that's the plot right there. Make it a little bigger, I suppose, if we want it. And let's look at fixing this up a little bit. Look at the different layouts. I think the one I normally like is probably that one. Yeah. Because then I can put titles and stuff on there, like weathered wood strength that kind of thing and this that y-axis is the frequency right if I just triple clicked really fast it highlighted the whole thing and then I can type over it do the same thing here and this is the strength if I could type interval and that's in PSI, right? You always want to use units, if at all possible. The Series 1 we don't really need. I can just click on it like that and I hit the Delete key, and it goes away. And there's a pretty decent-looking histogram. If I wanted to mess around with it a little more, I could use some of these tools here, like Layout. Like if the title doesn't appear, you can always reassign it here, like if it happened to disappear, like it just did, just go to chart title, above chart, it pops back up. Of course, I have to put it back in again, but same thing with all these other, you know, the legend that I shut off, the titles, any of that stuff. If you want to get into more of it, go to the bottom part, horizontal axis options, and there's all kinds of crazy things you could put in there, which aren't really that useful, but, uh, the ones that are are probably in the axes. If you wanted to change some of the scales and the numbers it's using, that's probably the spot to do all that. Uh, I guess that's about it. Format really is just a lot of pretty stuff. So the layout tab has, has more in it that I would tend to use. Trend lines we'll use later in the semester for other stuff. That should probably do it for you.